Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back to go through all the teams for my tournament. Yes, um, I just want to say before we get started, I, I was blown away by how many entrant entries I received in, especially in the last 48 hours, it was insane. So many new combatants, a lot of returning faces, and we're going to go through them. So yeah, as I said, a big thank you to everyone who decided to enter. You, you blew me away. <laughs> Alright, let's get started then. And yeah, I'm just going to quickly brush through all these because there's, well, 50 of the buggers. And yes, I will point out that I have had to increase the um, team cap to 54 to accommodate all of you lovely people. So instead of there being 8 groups of 6, we're going to have 9 groups of 6. And then the top 3 from each group will automatically get through. And then I believe it, by, yeah, 5 of the best 4th place teams will also go through to the last 32. But that's a long way away yet, and we haven't even started the tournament. So yeah, just going to quickly go through all the teams, and let's get started. So obviously we got me, the host, and yes, I decided to use Dr. Z instead of Dr. Taylor, because quite a few people have used Dr. Taylor, so I'm going to use Dr. Z instead. And I am coming in with a Mega Raptor, of course, with Crit Block, Tornado Toss, and Cyclone. And yes, I've gone for the um, Crit Block Cyclone combo. I'm hoping to get a Crit Block, and then I get a Cyclone off. So I get a free hit because of the way my rules work. And for those of you that don't know, I'll just quickly remind you that whenever a move gets removed by an effect like Critical Block or Shockwave, you will always go for the move that can't lose. So if Rock got removed, I would go Scissors. You get the gist. And yes, here's a real wild card. I've gone with Kamarasaurus. This Kamarasaurus is Charge type. And I've gone with Tire Attack, Softening Beam and Ocean Panic. I picked the Water Dinosaur to use this combo with because none of the other elements work with this combo because sand trap is sand trap and heat eruption are rock sonic blast green impulse and plasma anchor are all paper and ocean panic is the only scissors one so i can stack damage with tire attacks and softening beam and the charge type kamarasaurus and let me tell you something this moveset is a beastly moveset this kamarasaurus in a tie with softening beam and tire attack does an arse ton of damage so i'm really looking forward to getting that off and even if i don't the softening beam will do a decent amount of damage anyway because Kamarasaurus has a pretty strong crit. And dino number three, I think I mentioned it in one of my previous videos that I did want to use a secret dinosaur and I've gone with Deinonychus. This Deinonychus is attack type but I have the defense boost and light recovery so it's more focus on resilience than attack. But I also have the spinning attack so it has the type advantage over everything. Alright, that's enough about my awesome team that's probably going to win this tournament. <laughs> okay, up next we have Arctic Warriors with an Alpha Kentro, a Sorophagonax, and a, yes, an Omega Raptor because they are an unoriginal poser. Yes, expect a lot of Sorophagonax in this tournament. That's one thing I noticed. Lots of Sorophagonaxes. Oh yeah, moveset, Quake Saber, Earth Barrier. Again, you're going to see a lot of Earth Barrier and Banana Surprise. Sorophagonax, pretty much an all attacking moveset as same with the Mega. Okay, now for our next entrance, we have Xenoslick Goku with Pentaceratops. Again, Pentaceratops, quite a popular dinosaur in this tournament as well, surprisingly. Coronosaurus and Sorophagonax, and yes, this Coronosaurus is Hunter, and I may have underestimated Hunter type a bit, because the thing with Hunter type is that your dino is strong when it's winning, when it has more health left. So say Xeno goes 1-0 down, the Karanosaurus comes in and it would get an immediate power boost because the likelihood is the first dino on your opponent's team will have taken damage so Karanosaurus will always have more health. So interesting, very interesting. And then we got Sorophagonax here. Not sure if recovery is going to work that well on it, but we'll just have to see. Okay, now for our next combatant, we have Astarion. I think Astarion is a newbie, newbie in this tournament and we, they have a Decreosaurus, Tejongosaurus and Super Ankyceratops. Very interesting team here. Looking forward to seeing what this guy can do. Okay, this one I do need to clarify, and you're probably wondering why he's got minus two in his name. Because this is one of the guys that was that broke one of my rules. As a result, they they are received point deduction. So yes, I and Dan is starting on minus two points in the group stage. And they have an Aranosaurus, a Kark, and a Super Spino. Again, not much to say here. You know, technique boost could be good on the Kark to get Volcano Burst off more often. Dino Stuffer could be pretty good on Aranosaurus. Interesting movesets. Okay, now for Danex Tactile. Now Danex Tactile coming in with an Ulra Titan, a Yang Chungosaurus, and a Brontokins. Yes, the first ever combatant to use a Brontokins in this tournament. And there are quite a few Brontokins, which is surprising. I thought Brontokins would see a lot more play than it 
has done, but apparently it has. So yes, Uluru Titan, not much, not much to say about this team, to be honest. I'm interested in this moveset, though. Crit Block under the Tiebreaker and the Burning Dash. Could be an interesting moveset. Okay, in 7th we have, well, 7 shots, of course, and of course they have Sorrow Faganax. And yes, they are using Death Fire, so thankfully some people are actually using Death Fire, which is really good to see. And another Pentaceratops, and an Anatta Titan. Again, not much to say here. Okay, we have Slifer Sky Dragon X, and these two slashes here are, ref are basically for my reference when I do the group draw. So I know not to include Slifer Sky Dragon X because they were one of the top eight combatants, and they will be going into a group on their own. And you'll find you'll see more about that when I do the group. So yes, they have Super Eucentrosaurus, Gygus with the uh, Spectral Armor, and Paris. So it could be a very strong team in this tournament. Okay, up next we have Dark Ashtar with Metriacanthosaurus, Armatus with a Spectral Armor, and Eutoraptor. I'm actually intrigued to see how this how this Metriacanthosaurus fits. Uh, the technique boost is pretty good on it to increase his chances of getting heat eruption off and soften him. I feel like he's going for that tie combo that I'm going for as well, so I'll be intrigued to see how this plays out. Okay, now for our 10th entrant, we have Dinosaur Queen 777 coming in with an Alpha Succo, Super Taurosaurus, and Sorofaganax. Yes, Dinosaur Queen very much likes the attacking dinos, with the Futaba Cannon here on the Alpha Sucker, which has a very high crit, I, sh I might add. The Lightning Strike on the Taurosaurus, which again has a very high crit, and Firebomb on the Sorofaganax. So yes, Dinosaur Queen very specializes in attack. Okay, now up next we have Random Guy 86 with a Chasmosaurus. Oh, excuse me. With a Chasmosaurus, Tank Dinotector, and Alpha Allosaurus. Um, yeah, I'm intrigued to see how this Chasmosaurus does. I actually really like this moveset with Lightning Axe, Lightning Spear, and Anyangira Dive. I really like this moveset. Very promising. And could could be a moveset to watch in this tournament. Okay, here's a, reg here's a returning regular. We have Cryonova with Neovenator, the Kakirodontosaurus, and Paris Dinotector. Okay, here's one of the other naughty toddlers that decided to break my rules. We have Dino Hunter, who will be starting on minus four points, because I can. Coming in with an Alpha Ragosaurus, Sorolophus, and an Isosaurus. So yes, again, could be interesting to see. I'm not sure what recovery is going to do on this guy, though. But, you know, just have to see. All right, we have another tournament host. We have Adolf Adams coming in with Polar Canvas, a Rhinoceratops, and Gondwana type. Definitely a um, wild card team here. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how far he can go in the tournament with this team. Not that it's a bad team, it's a decent team, but, you know, we'll just have, it's a fiercely competitive tournament, so I don't know if he'll get far. Okay, here's our final naughty toddler, Dino Hug, coming in with the Sanjurus, Super Epistocelacordia, and Super Sinraptor. Sandtrap could be, is good on this guy, you know, Earth Barrier, bit of resilience. Seems to be more defensive than uh, attack. That's the, that's, the, the, that's the vibe I get from it. Okay, here we have Zalos Ares. And yes, Zalos didn't actually finish in the top eight, but because I have nine groups now, I have to put in someone else into the final group, which is Zalos, because Zalos got the most points in the group stage out of the guys that got knocked out at the last 16. So that's why Zalos is going into group I, and they are coming in with a Ceratosaurus, a Tajonosaurus, and the only black T-Rex in this tournament. Zalos could be one to watch in this tournament. Okay, now we have Jonas Chu, a returning customer with Stegosaurus, Mapusaurus, and Spinotector. Again, not much to say here. Pretty, pretty more attack-minded than last time he entered. Not much to say. Okay, here we have another one of the top eight competitors. That we have Ghidorah, who was Maximum Pyrus last time. And yes, I should point out that I'm not allowing name changes now. So your names will be staying the same way throughout the whole tournament. Comprende? Good. So yes, they have a Shant, a Spino, and a Super Eokark. Uh, I like this moveset for Eokark. You know, it's got to have Flare Sword, is not it? We've got our Flare Sword and Eokark areas. It's pretty much a staple. But yeah, Dino stuff it could be annoying to deal with. And this Spino, interestingly enough, doesn't have any water moves. Not pay off? Might pay off, I'll just have to see. Okay, here we have a new combat. We have Ratchet with a T-Rex, Alpha Allo, and Spinosaurus. And yes, they are also using Deathfire, so very attack-minded, this guy. Could, could be a deadly addition to this tournament. Okay, we have a new debutant here. We have Lauren Steele with Super Paris, Carnotaurus, and a Fairy. Again, I quite like this moveset for Super Paris. Could be, a, could be one to watch in this team. But yeah, very attack-minded again. 
A lot of attack-minded teams in this tournament. Here's our champ from the last tournament, Ultima Dino King. And he is coming in with a Karanosaurus, a Super Tarkia, and, well, the Alpha Acro he used last time. So yeah, not much to say here. Ultima Dino Kings fully expect to go far in this tournament. Will be one of the favourites going into this. Yeah, oh, that's Ultima Dino King for you. Okay, next up we have... I'm just going to say Gecko. I hope they don't mind. Yeah, I'm just going to call this guy Gecko. And they have a Mega Raptor because they're a poser. Alpha Gorgosaurus with Deathfire. Could be interesting to see. And a Patagosaurus. Yeah, I quite like this team, actually. Gorgosaurus does have a decent rock crit, so that Water Sword will pack a punch. High technique, so the recovery will do well and will be pretty effective with it. And again, this Alpha Gorgo with Fire Cannon, Tide Bomb. Yeah, I like this guy's moveset. It's very, very good. Could be could be one to watch. Okay, we have a returning customer here, again, with MEJP10. Didn't quite happen for them in my last tournament, but they've definitely stepped up their game this time with an Alpha Kentro, a Pentaceratops, and a Super Barry. And I think they have definitely stepped up from last time, so I fully expect Emmy to finally get a win in my tournament. Will they get out the group stage? We'll just have to see. Because, yeah, it's going to be a lot more competitive than last time, because there's only one bot team in this tournament, and that's the Champions team. Righty ho now. Now for 24, we have Moloch Horridus with Cychania, Lillian Sternus, and Spinotector. Again, this Cychania is interesting because it's a charge type and it's a tie specialist. And I believe he used this in Blood Moon's tournament and it was quite effective. And then we have Lillian Sternus here again with all the pretty standard moveset for a wind dinosaur, a moveset I've, I've used in the past. Not much to say. And then we have Spinotector again. All right. Coming in number 25, we have Jack McSevenR with a Super Ceratosaurus, Ampelosaurus, and Super Therizinosaurus. Now, interestingly enough, he's asked for the Awaken mode straight away. I'm not sure if that's going to be the best idea in the world, but we're just going to have to see how that plays out. But I do have concerns about that, but you just have to see. And this Ampelosaurus, defense boost, a bit of resilience, could be tricky for fire dinosaurs to deal with. And then Super Serato, technique boost, increasing the Jet Shuriken activationness. Yeah, so solid team though, solid. I think we could fall short, could be this Awaken mode bit. Okay, coming in next, we have Alpha Trooper with Alpha Iguanodon, Super Barry, and Megalosaurus. This Megalosaurus will hit like a truck, especially with our attack boost. Alpha Iguanodon could be annoying to get past, and well, Super Barry will give fire dinosaurs a problem because there are a lot of them. Okay, now we have a new combatant. We have Shin Dominus. Ignore that dash. Coming in with a Tajongosaurus, a Sorophaganax, and a Brontokins. A very attack minded team this guy has. So, yes, expect this guy to get a lot of sweeps in this tournament. It could, it could be a very, very quick match when you play this guy. Okay, also one of the returning top eights, we have Ultima Dino Queen. Coming in with that Uteraptor, which seems to be a staple for her. A Nata Titan, and she's gone with Omega Eocarcaria. Gone quite attacking this. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see, can she break that semi-final duck and get to the final? She's gone to several semi-finals, but never got quite to the final. Can she do it this time? Okay, we have another tournament host here in Blood Moon. Coming in with a T-Rex, a Baryonyx, and a Uteraptor. Again, not much to say here. Okay, number 30, we have Michaela. Another new combatant with a Lexovasaurus, a Giga, and a Super Taurosaurus. Definitely favouring them rock crits, and with Quake Saber and Magma Blaster, I suspect these two dinos are going to pack a big punch. This Giga in particular, because it has the Flare Sword and the Vault Burst. And Lexovasaurus could be an annoying dinosaur to get past. Super Taurosaurus as a finisher? It's actually a good finisher, because there's a lot of water dinosaurs in this slot and this slot, so... Yeah, Michaela could be one to watch in this tournament. Okay, we have another returning top eight. Combatant in Laos, two-time champion Laos. Probably the tournament favorite, as he always is. Coming in with an Ankyceratops, an Alpha Acro, and a Fairy. And with that team, I would fully expect Laos to get deep in this tournament. Okay, we do have a return here. This guy is coming back after missing my last tournament, and it is Monolof OG, but they've decided to call themselves the Thunderstorm. Coming in with Pentaceratops, Megaraptor, and Nodosaurus. They came close to winning it all last time until I beat. And could they go all the way this time? Just have to see. It's going to be hard for them to eclipse that achievement again to the final when they in the tournament last time. But you know, got to back yourselves, haven't you? 
Okay, up next we have Toka Nightmare, who had an absolute nightmare in my last tournament, coming in with an Alpha Raj, Super Lillian Sternus, and Brontokins. Okay, Brontokins is probably going to be the beast MVP of this team. Decided to use Brontokins instead of Omega Eokark. Um, the Super Lillian Sternus could be an Achilles heel in this team, maybe, with all the fire dinosaurs running around. Quite a fragile dinosaur. And, you know, we remember the match where... Toka's Super Eucentrosaurus got killed in one hit by a Laxovasaurus, so... Okay, we have another returning customer in Dino Nerd, coming back with a Giganonosaurus, Ulura Titan, and a Super Fairy. Not much to say about the Super Fairy. Ulura Titan could be an interesting one here, and Giganonosaurus is Giganonosaurus, and he loves it, so he wanted it. Okay, up next we have Heady the Eddy. <laughs> just, just kidding, just Heady. With a T-Rex, a Spinosaurus, and an Ankylosaurus. Again... Not much to say about this moveset, pretty much all attacking moves. Yeah, he didn't really know what to pick, so yeah, that's usually what happens when people don't really know what moves to pick, they'll just pick attacking ones. Which isn't, which is no problem, it's just, is what it is. Okay, we have another top 8 combatant returning with Diddy Darius, coming in with Gigant Spinosaur, Amargosaurus and Tank Dino Tectin. I actually want to talk about this team, because this is... Probably one of my standout teams in this tournament, because I actually like this team, this moveset for the Gigant Spinosaur, gone for the Resilience, but it does have the power of Rock Roller to give it some attack. This Amargosaurus could be deadly, because it's Crisis type, he'll have attack boost, and Futaba Cannon gets triggered after a win, so when he gets off a of Futaba Cannon, he's going to have an attack boost as well, and he'll have get, he could get Final Fury off if Amargosaurus is on low health. And he could get extra damage with a Crisis type. So this Amargosaurus could definitely be an Achilles heel for those fire dinosaurs. And Tank Dinotector is Dinotector. Um, I'm not sure if it needs the technique boost, but I suppose I suppose he just wants to play it safe and make sure he gets off sand traps and earth barriers. You know, because we have seen in previous tournaments where things like Omega Eokark won't get off a heat eruption, won't get off a flare sword, won't get off a vault burst, even though it has a thousand technique. So you know. Better safe than sorry, I suppose. And yes, we have another returning top 8 combatant in Nopi. Coming in with that tank that served him so well last time. With the exact same moveset as well, because it really did help him out. And it pretty much carried him to the quarters. Really, get, really did really well with that tank. But this time, they've gone with Super Barry and Surofagonac. So a bit more attacking this time instead of resilience. So yeah, Nopi could be one to watch in this tournament. Always seems to do well. Okay, down here we have another new combatant. We have Marissa Kirasame with Fukui Raptor, a Super Kama, and a Pachycephalosaurus. Yeah, not much to say here. I'm not sure about Aqua... I'm not sure about this moveset, to be honest. You know, because the Kama's focus is more on the crit because it has a very high paper crit so i'm not sure if hydro cutter and futaba cannon are going to be that effective with on it but we'll just have to see and well again this seems to be standard for wind dinosaur users i mean i used to use this moveset in the back in the day and speaking of wind dinosaurs let's have a look at this guy's team jeremy blue scott coming in with you streptospondylus and aloactrox and a super sarah again i'm not convinced that it should be awakened right away, but, you know, this is cool. And point number two, he's got a full win team. And he is actually the only one that has a team with the same element. And the fact that it's a wind team, with with fire being the most popular element in this tournament. I feel bad for him, because he, he said he's pretty confident about his team, but I'm not sharing that confidence. And I feel like... Unless he gets really, really lucky with the matchups, I feel like it could be an early exit for this guy. But you never know. You never know. He might spring a surprise. Okay, down here, at number 40, we have a new combatant, Cerno Strongest Fairy. Coming in with a Eustreptospondylus, Mini King, which will be interesting to see, and a Cryolophosaurus. Again, not convinced by recovery on the Cryo because, well, they wanted to use Haste, and I said no because I hate Haste, and this. It's a waste of a move in these tournaments. So yeah, they just went with recovery, so I don't mind that. But yeah, this cryo will always be deadly, to hard to stop. Mini King, I'm I'm ex interested. I'm intrigued to see how well this Mini King will fare in the tournament. And this you strip the spondylus is pretty decent. All right, down here we have the return of DBW's original gangsters. Of course, this time I'm referring. They want me to refer to them as Dog Two. Coming in with a Baryonyx, a Tarkia, and a Super Fairy. Not much to say here. Super Fairy will be Super Fairy. Tarkia, you know, could could be a solid team, this. 
could go far in the tournament. Okay, down here we have another returning top eight. We with Le Pope using an Avalosaurus, a Sejuanosaurus, and an Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus using defense moves, not all secret moves, which always which I always find interesting when when you use a secret dino and you don't use all the secret moves. I find that interesting. Alright, we have some new combatants here with heavy weapons guy. Again, he wants the awaken mode straight away on his Super Alioramus. I'm not sure if that's the brightest idea. Well, it's too late now, you can't change it. And then we have Uluru Titan and Ampelosaurus. Up next, we have Balasaurus with Gojirasaurus, Pentaceratops, and Super Karifasaurus. Thing for me is having technique boost in this moveset, which just does not work. It's pointless. I believe someone had it technique boost in their moveset in their last tournament and it was absolutely pointless so yeah <laughs> but you know it's a, it's your call it's their call this go Girasaurus. i like this moveset actually with elemental power to help it deal with fire dinosaurs better and it's got the dino illusion and the decent technique as well if i really wanted to be picky i would probably swap mayfly for sonic blast because go is charge type and sonic blast damage isn't affected by the type of disadvantage but, you know, again, say call. Okay, another returning combatant. We have Engineer Gaming with an Acrocamphosaurus. They used this last time. Panoplosaurus and Super Karifasaurus. Again, with the same movesets they used last time on their previous dinos. But they just changed the dinos. So, instead of Super Tala, we got Panoplo. And instead of Paratector, we have Super Karifa. Okay, we have another new combatant here in Gypsy Danger. Coming in with a Rugops, Abelosaurus and Ampelosaurus. Not much to say here. Again, Atomic Bomb isn't the best move to use on Amplosaurus. You should really use Neck Crusher if you want to make better benefits from that move. If I said that right, I completely butchered that. But yeah, again, Atomic Bomb could do this, could do some damage, but Neck Crusher is more ideal. Alright, we have Morselet. Morselet coming in with a Yangchungosaurus, Spinosaurus, and Procerolophus. Again, all attacking moves basically, not much to say here. Okay, number 48, we have Dino Smash coming in with a Kaka, a Pentaceratops, and a Uteraptor. Again, not much to say. <laughs> all attacking moves, really. And down here, we have a ya Yamazanadu. Well, that's going to be tough to pronounce during the tournament. Coming in with a Gojirasaurus, Super Talarurus, and Super Eocarcarian. Interestingly enough, they have attack boost on all of their teams, and this guy committed a crime against humanity. Not having Flare Sword on Super Eocarc. Minus 10 points. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. This could be a deadly Eocarc area without Death Fire and the Awaken mode. Maybe I should have disallowed that, but we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Maybe he won't even get it off at all. And yes, I like this Gojirasaurus moveset. Packing a bit of punch there. But yeah, this guy could be one to watch. Alright, coming in at number 50, we have Fool's Cap Hamato coming in with a Uteraptor. Oh, and I forgot to enter the character card because they want to use Fool's Cap with an Alpha Acro and a Storacosaurus. Uh, I'm not convinced by this moveset. Heat Eruption, well, then again, is Alpha Acro, and pff, you saw how many times that thing got off Heat Eruption, Flare Sword, and Volk Burst when a certain someone used it, so it'll probably get off Heat Eruption plenty of times in the tournament. But yeah, not much to say here. In at number 51, we have Random Shy Ghost with a Spinosaurus, a Stegosaurus, and a Megalosaurus. Again, all attacking moves, not much to say. Alright, coming in at 52, we have Pilk with Lexovasaurus, you stripped the Spondylus, and Ampelosaurus. Again, not much to say. And then I'll do LP Gozzi last because he is sending me, he's in the middle of doing his team, so he doesn't actually have a team yet. It's not complete, it's, he's in the process. And when he does give me a team, I will post it on Discord for you all to see. And then down here, we have the Champions team, being the Champions team with Sejuang, Armatus, and Parasaurolophus, the winners of my last three mini tournaments. So yeah, that is pretty much all the teams. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed me going through all the teams. Are there any teams that pick the standout to you? Who do you think is going to do well in the tournament? Who would you like to avoid in the group stage? Who would you like to face in the group stage? Pop a comment down below, and I hope you enjoyed, and... Until the group draw, this is Stranger Gamer, signing out.